three hours. Stop your eager. Stop. You're born out. Take some for yourself. I did one a few years ago. Took a whole weekend to myself in a hotel, never in my house, to my, my family. No one must phone me. No phone calls. I, was, I, I just slept my Bible. I didn't even eat for three days. I, I didn't plan to fast. And I felt better afterwards. I came back high. So you know, that's my own, that's, that's, that's my own. You know what works for you and try and, and, and do it. Do things you enjoy. I like girls' day out. Yesterday, I went out my, for my first I, I went to school. It was fun. We had a good laugh. When you laugh from your belly, you, know, you, you saw it's a good stressor. No pills can take that one away. Laugh. You want to go for spa? You want to go and do your nails? You know what works for you. Just do it. You want to go for a facial? Just do, do nothing. It works. Time out regularly. Have a day at least one day of the week. Look after yourself. It's very important. Then I said, laugh, laugh, laugh. Laugh from your, your, your belly. No laugh at mm-hmm. From your belly, it's in one's calories. Laugh a lot, not your friendships. I'm very good about that. Walk, walk, walk. All your friendships. Mm-hmm. Some people say, I've been burned before. Forgive and forget. Have some yeah, different kinds of friends. You know, friend, maybe you have a friend that one can talk to. I, I bought, I bought, I call it. Some is once in a blue moon, some is when once in a blue. Have friendships, not your them. Call, text, birthdays, pray together. It helps a lot to the stress. And, and as I will say, if you think you're not really coping mentally, do not be ashamed. Seek medical help. There, there are many Christian cousins around. Your pastor, most Christians have cousins that people talk to for to counseling. Talk to them. Someone to body, body and mind. What I saw happen, happen in the point I was stressed is to have, keep a, a journal. Write things down of how you're feeling and go into the Bible and see what things, and I'm, I don't mean the spiritual, but it helped me in the past. What God says about what things you're going through and just keep on repeating those things yourself. Whenever you think you're feeling a bit down sometimes, get a verse. Just keep on repeating to yourself. Get some good music. I know uplifts you. Plug your ears. Listen. I like to dance. That's myself. I, I, I'm sweating. You know what works for you. Look after your mental health. But if all this is thick and not cope, please seek help. There are many counselors, and there are many coaches as well around the place, so, but almost in America and England. Please use them. They do help you. Look after yourself. It is extremely important. Our mental health is important. Also, have a forgiving heart. No bad grudges. Some people say they cannot forgive and forget. God will give you the grace to forgive and forget. Let go. So it was done a while in the UK that people who, who hold bitterness, who don't forgive, have a of developing cancer. Like God's grace, not, not mm-hmm. a portion. Forgive and forget and move on. Also, try and delegate. You know, I don't believe in super. I used to be a super one. Give people chores. You can afford it. Get help. Be a, be a gardener. Don't cook for you. Cleaning. You know what you can do. What you can afford. Just try and do what you can do. You know what you can do easily. And what you don't like to do is in laundry. Get someone to do it for you. Prioritize your health. That your me time, sleeping time, rest time is extremely important. And if for instance, you have to go, go to see a counselor, go to see a, a psychotherapist, even a psychiatrist, do not be ashamed. I'm saying over and over again, our culture is changing. Thank God. See them. They are, they are there to help you. They are supposed to. It doesn't mean you go antidepressants. It's for life. It doesn't, it's not a stigma anymore. And it does work. After a while, you come off it. Mental health, I'm saying over and over again, is extremely, extremely, extremely important. Guard it with all your might, and God will help us to guard it. Stay happy, laugh more. That's my mental health. I'll go to the next slide. The number one is sleep. We have to sleep. Prioritize your sleep. How much do you sleep? Six to eight hours at night. It's extremely important. Most of us do night shifts. We work on us. I used to wake up before to in the hours in to, to, to cook at five o'clock in the morning. I think about why I was doing that. From for what time? Sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Have a good sleeping routine. You know what works for you, what time you have to sleep. People say they, they can sleep on a few hours a day. I believe long time it catches up on you. Try and sleep. Not sleeping enough affects your health long term. The main thing, sleeping pills should be a no-no. They don't actually help you sleep. They sedate you and they're addictive. The more you take, the more you get hooked on them. The more you need more and more higher doses. And it's difficult to come off it. And a real addiction is quite, quite common. Avoid sleeping pills. 
have a routine. I, 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 I what should you do to, to have a routine? But I would suggest, I'm going to buy myself, you know what time, you want to go to bed for instance about 10 p.m. So by nine o'clock, start to wind down. So I then wind down, turn off your tablets, your phones, all gadgets, turn them off, because the blue light it makes the brain for much longer. So melatonin in the brain, and brain needs to make you sleep. Won't, won't, won't go to your correct levels. People take melatonin tablets. It's an option, it's quite common in America over the counter. But I think avoid pills. Pills should be your last resort. Get a sleep hype hygiene. Have a shower. Come out is very good. So basically, it does help you sleep. Take two tea bags, put it in your mug, leave there for about 10 minutes, drink it. You survive after it makes you sleep, it relaxes you. Have a good mattress. Change your mattress ideally every 10 years. Sleep is means in our lifetime, third of our lives is spent sleeping. Treat yourself, get nice bed sheet, cotton, you don't cotton bed sheets. Treat yourself, you deserve it. Have nice cotton, nice cotton sheets on your bed. Get a good um, underlay under your mattress so it's nice, soft, good supporting bed, nice full pillows. Have a nice sleep. Turn your light, have like a small light, not the, um, um, the big light. Black out curtains and sleep properly. If you think you're not able to sleep still, there are many things you could do over the time how to sleep. Be it like some soothing music you get or see your doctor. They really can teach you, help you to sleep, but we must sleep more. If you don't sleep, it has so many bad certain health, health hazards I don't go into. So as the people who sleep less, it's habit of having dementia or some certain cancers like the breast, the colon and other wounds. I'm not in favor of work night shift, but try your best to sleep. You're working nice as well. Then get back home, have blackout curtains. So everybody's all back, all dark and have a good sleep. Turn everything off and sleep properly. We need to sleep more. The more you sleep, the cells get rigid replenished. I think it helps your health. You look better when you sleep, so sleep more whenever you can. Then the dementia is getting more common now because we, we're living much longer, we are more stressed, and it's a real thing. My dad, dad had dementia, and it really broke my heart to my father. After I was, he didn't know who I was. It was just happening. It was a professor at the end, he couldn't even hold a pen or sign his day. Dementia is real. So I know sometimes it's a way the brain ages, but you can do things to help yourself by avoiding dementia. Stimulate your brain. Some of us have to get older and we go towards retirement ages. We get a bit lazy. We stop reading. Learn that, that, that computer course. Do a computer course to learn the computer more. Learn, read more, do puzzles, go out, volunteer, go for walks. Don't get secluded. It's very important. Dementia is real. Stimulate your brain. You know what works for food, but I say every day, we should all try and read more. Blacks, like we say blacks don't read, but we should change, we should change narrative. Let's try and read more. Stimulate your brain. Do puzzles. Go, go and learn, learn, learn something. Go, go and learn golf, to play golf. Go swimming. Go to kick fit classes. Just do things. Volunteer in homes to stimulate your brain. Dementia is real, but we can do our best. And God helping us to rent out getting the dementia. Eat foods high in omega-3. Drink water, water, water. That's not that biggie for me. I'm, I'm not being proud, but I know most of you in the States, you like your sodas. There are many, you got many, many iced tea, all sorts. I love them, too, but it's not good for us. Drink water, water, water. When you drink water, our bodies, two of our body, two thirds of our body is made of water. You don't drink water, you get dehydrated, and it's very common. You think you're tired. You're dehydrated. You think you're hungry. You're dehydrated. I think you're, when you're hungry, I said, "Boy, you're hungry." Just be when the sugar rush. You're tired, or you're just bored. First of all, drink a glass of water. Wait 15, 20 minutes. If you're still hungry, then go and eat. Most times, you're thirsty. You're not hungry, so drink water. Water helps a lot. Then going down our eyes. I'm not, I'm not about here. We check our eyes every two years. I'm not sure about America, but every two years, have your eyes checked. Why should I have your eyes check? As you get older, we need to, to, to read. Most of these guys to read. Also, look at your eyes regularly. Some of, some kind of cholesterol can be shown this, or diabetes, or high blood pressure shown from your eyes. So have your eyes checked. Have history of diabetes or glaucoma. Have you checked more often, ideally every year. Have your eyes checked. It's very important. People could go blind by not having regular eye tests. Also, our teeth. I know Americans have, have, so they have very good teeth. Check your teeth once a year to remove the plaque. Because plaque gets bacteria in intimacy on your teeth, it affects your heart. 
and your lungs long term. So please check your teeth regularly so you can do skill lung polishing. Also, you have a issue of um, chronic diseases of the, of the heart and the lungs. If you don't check your teeth regularly, protect from your mouth into your heart and your lungs causes severe disease to your heart and lungs. So please check your teeth regularly. Floss reg every day, floss your teeth with dental floss. Brush your teeth twice a day. It sounds very, 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 very basic, but some people forget to brush your teeth at night time. It's extremely important to, to brush your teeth. And when you have sugar juice as well, try your best to drink some water or to gargle and rinse them up afterwards. So the, the chica does not eat your enamel, causing tooth decay as you get older. Your skin is very important. This organ of our body is our skin. We wear sunscreen daily. Most of you think because they are blacks. We don't need sunscreen. We don't need sunscreen. I see skin cancer in black people. We wear sunscreen regularly. Your face, your neck, your hands, wear sunscreen. Also, have a good moisturizer as well. You forget, don't forget your hands. Age, our hands age very quickly. Don't wear it very regularly. When people are on your face, go up to your neck, upwards. It's good to look good. Helps your self confidence, helps your mental health as well. So, regularly helps. Drink less coffee and tea, it makes your skin quite dehydrated. Drink more, wa drink more water. To get older, skin gets quite dry. And also, have blasting known to have dry skin. Use lots of moisturizer on your skin. Also, try and get some serums. Don't need to buy anything posh, any um, like Lancome, like that. No, don't need to have all these big brands. Simple brands you can get in your drugstore. Once you are consistent and do it regularly, it does help your skin long term. Any brand, get a good serum. I'm quite hot on hyaluronic acid. It's quite good for your skin. Makes it very hydrated. And also niacinamide as well. It's quite good for your skin before your day moisturizer. Also, don't forget your hands. Regularly helps sunscreen. Also, skin disease, you may have skin disease, because you have thyroid disease. Skin gets very dry or flaky, so you have thyroid disease. Arthritis, autoimmune disease, all affect the skin. So check your skin regularly. Anything you can say, any blemishes is not going there. Also, we do have we do get moles as well, or skin cancer. Any unusual mole you're not sure of in your skin, or it starts with itch or bleeds, or looks unusual. Take pictures or to you see your, your family physician. If it changes, see them. Skin cancer is real. Please check your skin regularly. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but look after ourselves. So I said before, drink lots of water, cleanse your skin twice a day. She so said, black skin has dry, not dry skin. Regularly exfoliate, nothing fancy. Get some um, brown sugar and, and honey together. That, that helps, both your skin properly. When you finish it regularly, skin, skin starts to glow regularly. The serum, do it regularly and you'll be fine. Always apply your skin, everything you do to your face and neck and to your chest as well. So when you wear clothes, you don't have like black or face and, and, and fancy body. All regular does help a great deal. Am I going too fast? Let me know. Am I going too fast? You're smiling. You're very polite. You're not telling me. Tell them to slow down. Also, your diet. I don't believe in diets. Why don't I believe in diets? They don't work. They don't last. It works for a time being. Because most of you, anything your diet needs, it work. It isn't your, your body water in most cases. I don't believe in diets. Eat everything. But everything in moderation. We always about uh, our say about the Caribbean. We eat too much. Portions are too much. We eat, of the food we eat in our plate. We, we only have of it. We also get stores of fat. So eat portions should be much less. See, your normal plate half should be vegetables, vegetables. One quarter our carbs. Other one should be our protein. As you get older, we need more and more protein. As a basic just guide your palm. So any meat you have should be side of your palm if each meal. So is it fish? This size. Meat? This size. Chicken? Without your skin? This size. This size. So eat more protein and less carbs. I think where we eat normally, where we grow up with, we should swap around. So we should eat small bits of, bit of protein and more or more carbohydrates. Swap around. Less carbohydrates, more protein. Initially, your body will be shocked. We get used to it. Eat your vegetables, your salads. It will fill you up. Before you eat any meal, do a glass of water. You see you're eating it, and you, why? That's why your, your, your tummy does shrink and get used to it. Eat all foods, as much as you can. Avoid very fatty and processed food. When you go shopping, don't go shopping on your empty stomach. We tend to buy then the wrong foods. We take so long, it really, don't go shopping also in a hurry. 
read the labels, you'd be surprised how much hidden sugar we have on our packages. I mean, I think I may go shopping. If I cannot pronounce, I, I don't buy. That means it has chemicals in it. Cannot pronounce it, can't pronounce it in one breath, leave it alone. Or there are any E numbers, leave it alone. It's all processed food. Try and cook from scratch. It helps a great deal. Eat more plant-based meals, more plant fats. You get older, it helps. Diet, as I say, I, I, keto, all these things, Cambridge, they, they're not, um, they're not um, sustained, sustaining diets. Eat much, eat everything you want to eat, but in moderation, less processed foods. Exercise helps your health against so many diseases. Everything you can think of, it's like, your mental health, it says helps. But if you're eating badly, then you don't go to the gym to do one hour, it's a waste of your time. Exercise is different from diet. As I always tell people, you exercise to, to be active and be healthy. You eat properly to lose the weight and to be healthy as well. So they all work hand in hand. You cannot say I'll, I'll eat like today and, it's, and then exercise tomorrow, it won't work. You're not losing, you won't see any progress. Exercise, nothing fancy. Do what you enjoy. We cannot all, we don't all like going to the gym. So go for prayer walks, go for walks, go swimming. You need to let live, but try our best to lift some weights once in a while. Just go for walks or exercise cardio all the time. As you get older, our, 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 our muscles. So even though you look slim, you don't, you don't have the correct, you don't look good. And it's like you don't have the correct figure. Your bones are not strong. So any minor force get older, you can get the fracture because of osteoporosis. Lift weights, not fancy. Get your, your thin foods. Lift it up, bottle of water, lift as you go for a power walk, it's a small dumbbells, just do something. Waist helps. And the more muscle you have, the more you keep in shape because the muscle burns the, cal the fat much quicker for you than those just having only water and fat in your body. So, and I don't believe in, in going on the scales. Scales, some people who have 70 kilograms, same height, look very different. It's what's, what's like, how much percent do I have in my body? How much fat, how much water, how much water? That's what you should really think. And check your measurements. Your waist is very important. The bigger your waist, the more fat you have around your heart. So as a general rule, your height is centimeters. Should be, your waist should have your height in centimeters. So for instance, I'm 100 centimeters in height. I should be around 50 centimeters, much less. Sorry, I back up in inches, back up in inches. So it must be less. So watch your, watch your diet. Your waist is very, very important. Your waist measurements, check it properly. The, and also bigger waist you have, if you have to having diabetes and blood pressure and metabolic syndrome. So be careful, exercise regularly. It says it starts very simple. If you have, want to go and pick, pick up your, your, your bag of sense, don't send junior, pick up your, don't send junior. Go up yourself. Come pick up your bag yourself. You don't know about 10, 20, 20, 20 steps. The doorbell rings. Don't call someone to, want to open the doorbell. Go there and open the doorbell outside the door yourself. These are things that goes a long way to, to maintain our, our, our health. Why exercise? As I said before, you sleep much better. You have more happy hormones in your, your brain, serotonin, which helps your mood. Better bone strength, your, your bone is more dense, so you have you have less, you're having fractures any minor fall, you're more flexible. The more, the more flexible you are, you get less injuries. If you're stiff, have a small fall, small turn, easily break your bone or to have torn ligaments. Also increase your heart health, like exercising as well. When you exercise, have this, this properly. Just imagine, typically, the, all the debris, all the plaque, the cholesterol in your body gets washed off, doesn't stick onto the arteries, coronary arteries. So it also helps you with your heart health as well. And also, I said, and after COVID, we have some basic things in our house. Blood pressure machine, thermometer, pulse oximeter, all on, on Amazon or your drugstore. It's very important. Blood pressure machine, pulse oximeter, and thermometer. Why should we have the blood pressure machine? Check a blood pressure every three, four months. Check a blood pressure. Let's just get regular. It's quite easy to do. And you know your numbers. You're not sure. Go and ask a doctor. Pulse oximeter, time of COVID. How, how, how am I breathing? Shouldn't I have my bloodstream? Helps. Thermometer, look for your temperature. Those three things you must have. And this checks, I'm, I'm not sure how it happens in, in the US for to ask, but every three years, we check the colonoscopy every three years. It's advisable. I think America is every one year, I'm not representing it, but please check. And your breast examination, do it yourself every month. If you have it after your periods, ideally, because before your periods, breast sounds very, feels very lumpy. 
after you have menopausal, you know what time suits you? Is it month you know, you remember? And the month check your breast checks. I just check quicker do your breast. It's very, very important. We also know what your breast feels like normally. Everybody has one breast bigger than the other. That's normal. But you know what's, what's normal for you. Once a month, get a good full left mirror. Start from the mirror. Look at your breast. And I just symmetrical. But every breast one's bigger than the other. But it's just slight. Show that you know what's normal for you. Check the skin. Is the skin smooth? Is it dim like an orange? And I'll be worried. Is one stronger than the other? I'll be worried. As you feel differently, I'll be concerned. Any lumps? I'll be concerned, but how do you examine your breast? Don't poke your breast, it'll be lumpy. Your palm of your hand, you divide your breast into four quadrants. You do this, one, two, three, four, against your chest one, no, don't poke. And then one more in your armpits, because I have some better treat in my armpits. So I'll go over again, one, against, two, three, four, last one in your armpits. If you feel any lumps, See your doctor. Then you squeeze your nipples. Any liquid coming out, I'll be concerned. Any blood discharge, any milk discharge, you're not breastfeeding, is it of concern. You're not even sure how it is. Speak to your chief, it's very, very important. So I ain't just wear different here. But every age of 14 in this country, every you should go for a checkup every year. But I know abroad, you can see you can go every year for your blood test. Your, your, your blood work is very important for all the blood tests height and weight measurements. It picks up things very early. And the earlier things are picked up, the better it can be treated. I think you call it pap smears. Check it every year. Here's your three years, every, 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 years, every year, things every year in America. Regular pap smears and mammograms. I think it's also yearly as well. Don't miss all this. You must always make sure you ensure you go for these checks because you can do these things up very early. Most times they're completely incurable. So please, don't miss your, 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 your yearly checks, it's very important. And as I, I'm not sure about these numbers about America, but even when I get older, no matter how old you are, you still like my opinion, have regular mammograms is very, very important. I also have a family any disease at all, like blood pressure, diabetes, glaucoma, let the doc, doc, the doctor know, so you can know what tests to check for regularly as well. And obesity is, is really coming like a cancer all over the world. So we've got to really make sure we, look after our health. And in most cases, if the mother is overweight, so are the children, because we feed it to the family. So from very young age, you don't know how to have smoothies, vegetables, fruits, and portion control is extremely important. My take home tips, I must finish take home tips. I'll go back to our, our mental health. It's extremely important, the mental health. If you're feeling low, not coping, seek help early. Also, I'm going to put a contact to a question as well. Look out for people around you, not just you, not anybody in church, your family, your friend, who is a bit low, reach out to them. They may not open up to you, but just tell them that you are there for, for them. They have any worries, they want to talk about it. They want to talk to you. Talk to the operational, it's very important. Also, our children. In the past few months, I mean, people have our young children, black children, have committed suicide. It's heartbreaking. And why is that? They cannot talk to us, our parents. They're not coping. They're like living in two different worlds. Most they, in their home is Nigeria, outside the, they're in the US. So different cultures, they're confused, they're troubled. They cannot speak to us. Let's open our eyes and God will help us to listen to it. What are for unspoken cues in our children who are not really coping? Could be the peer pressure, not coming to school or work. It's really rampant. Let's open our eyes and God will help us. Look out for our friends, our family, and for our children who are not really coping. Always wear sun cream, it's extremely important. Also, any tiny medicine you find your body's throughout your instinct, any bit after menopause, after one year, I'll be concerned. Any lumps you can find, I'll be concerned. Change your bowel habits. You start to see it before, and I'm having more diarrhea or constipation. Any blood when you open your bowels, when you wipe yourself, any vaginal discharge is abnormal, smelly, offensive, bloody, seek help as ill as possible. Final note be kind to yourself, look after yourself, pamper yourself. Treat yourself. That top you want to buy for yourself, once you can afford it, treat yourself. Love is too much for you. Our oh, children, you give them all they want in most cases. But yourself, you deny yourself. Look after yourself. Once in a while, if you buy yourself a top, I'm not sure about you. I'm, I'm on high for the next few days. I feel pampered. Look after yourself. Don't anybody to, 
to, to tell me that I love you. Every day, look in the mirror. My kids, today you look well, look at your hair, look good. It helps you. So if a guy didn't tells you that you look good, you know you look good. So you say you look good. It helps your mental health. It's not vain to want to look good or to feel good. We deserve it as God's children. God, and final note, say no. Cannot cope, cannot do it. Do, you know, El Shaddai. When God is El Shaddai, say no. God bless you. You are muted, ma'am. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Banker Johnson. The Lord Almighty will continue to bless you. Uh, ladies, we have had it all before we go to the second part. If you have any questions, you can unmute yourself or you can write a note or you can raise your hands. So we give you like a minute to think about the question. Or if you don't want to unmute yourself, you can write it, text it to the host, or you raise up your hands. So let me check whether there is any. OK. Uh, Sister Bumi, someone is raising up her hands. Maybe you let her in. Sister Bumi? Yes, ma. There's no one raising their hands. They're saying thank I you. Saw, thank I saw you. someone. Uh, you can check. I saw somebody raising up her hands. And they... Uh, we have thanks a lot. Thank you, doctor. Um, no one is raising their hand. Ah. Okay, anyone with any question? Are we all okay? Um, I think we can still take sessions at the end of uh, the second presentation. Okay. Um, so that you could give others a chance to maybe you want to lump it together or something. Okay. Okay, we can start with our sister. Sister Titi. Okay. She's going to talk to us about self-love. And if you have any question, you can continue to write it down. <laughs> and the Lord Almighty will help us. Over to you, Sister Titi. You are welcome. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, Miss, can I have control so I can share my PowerPoint? Um... Okay. That has been done. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And share screen. Okay, can you all see my screen? Okay, yes. good evening, everyone. Um, I'm glad to be here today and to see so many nice, warm, lovely faces. Um, I will touch on most of what my sister, Dr. Johnson, has spoken about, but I would uh, look at it from um, a slightly different point of view. Um, she's talked about self-love. Um, as African women, we tend to take on a lot. Uh, we're expected to be the superwoman. We look after everybody but ourselves. And the whole idea of seminars like this is to draw us back to look inwards and start to look at ways at which we can start to look after ourselves and find ways where we can improve and not just accept uh, what is now considered as normal, as not normal. Um, in line with what she said earlier, self-love is 
just simply uh, working on protecting, nurturing and preserving your mental, emotional, physical and spiritual awareness of yourself. And um, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, had already told us to love our neighbor as ourselves which shows we really must love ourselves first before we can love our neighbor. I would look at self-love from uh, the different emotional areas um, because self-love is considered more, it's, it's, not, it's more than just going out to buy things for yourself or doing your hair or fixing your nails. Self-love is a continuous journey um, it doesn't stop and self-love is very wide. Self-love is a lot of things. It's your mental state, it's your emotional well-being, it's your physical well-being, your spiritual well-being, your physical health. Uh, and like I said, it's, it's a lifelong thing. You don't stop. But I find that with a lot of us women, we have a lot of issues that we need to deal with. So with everything, there's always a starting point. And the starting point for me is stopping and assessing where you are. What kind of situation do you find yourself in? Are you one of those that is healing from betrayal? Are you lonely? I, I, have you just been separated from the love of your life? Have you lost the loved one? Do you find yourself lonely? Maybe the children are all grown and you're by yourself, the loneliness. It could be a lot of things, but you need to stop and assess your current situation. Where are you in your journey? What is it that you need to deal with? What is your pain point? What is causing you sleepless nights? What's making you overeat? What's disturbing you? Um, my Dr. Johnson talked about keeping a journal. I find that it's helpful for me. Sometimes I make a recording. If there's something that's been bothering me, I write it down. Why have I got to this point? Who has offended me? What do I need to deal with? How can I address this situation so that I take myself out of this dark place and begin to heal? Um, Like I said, it's a long journey. The very first step is identifying what the problem might be. And also, um, how do I cope with this? Do I need help? Do I need professional help? Do I need to talk to someone who can help me? How do I address this? This is where the therapy and uh, reaching out to people who can better your mental state and if there are issues, maybe you've done something, we've all made poor choices in the past that haunt us. Um, let us come to terms with it so that we can forgive ourselves and move forward. Um, a wrong step is not a death sentence. Everybody goes through different phases. We just need to be mindful of those experiences. What do we learn from them? What can we take out of it? And how do we ensure that that doesn't happen to us again? Most importantly, your spiritual well-being. You need that connection. It's not just accepting that you're born again. How is your prayer life, like Dr. Johnson said? What are you doing about it? Are you just speaking to your pastor? What steps are you taking yourself to connect with the higher power so that you can be guided? as to how you can deal with your problems, how you can resolve them, and ask for strength to be able to move forward. Then we go on to the emotional bit of it. Find your tribe, people who nurture, support, and encourage you to be the best that you can be. Uh, we all have mentors, people who spur us on and encourage us. It could be with um, 
your group of friends, maybe people you've gone to school with, or people who would encourage you in your career path. You're not too late to learn. And um, it could also be social friends. We have different clubs for maybe exercises or connecting or, or, or meeting people. You just need to find your happy place. What's gonna help you get out of the present situation that you're in? What makes you feel better? Dr. Johnson had talked about going for walks to clear your head, having your quiet time, and also maybe relating with somebody who it's a professional along those lines that can aid you and guide you and support you to become better at what you want to do. It's also very important that every little step you take, you acknowledge and give yourself some credits. You're doing well. We'll have good days, we'll have slightly gray days. But the most important thing is we show ourselves some kindness and compassion. We need to talk positively to ourselves. Uh, usually the affirmations that you can say, maybe look in the mirror and tell yourself you're beautiful, you're strong, you're able, you're capable. You know, it all works, it depends on um, what really, really, what you feel comfortable with. I, I say affirmations to myself all the time, especially when I'm feeling low. I find that by the time I say it once or twice, or it could be early in the morning or anytime during the day, or just say a, a prayer, it does help to give me strength. And uh, the different ways to practice self-care uh, the most important thing, like I said, is don't ignore your needs. Don't ignore issues that you need to deal with. Um, get help when you need. And like Dr. Johnson said, you need to get a good night's sleep, eat healthy, and connect with your tribe. That's very important. Friends and family and mentors that bring out the best in you. Set boundaries for people who are toxic for your well-being, people who make you sad or run you down. It's very important what we see. You surround yourself with what uplifts you. I like flowers. I like the, especially the ones with fragrance. They just give me, give a beautiful uh, sort of ambience and a, a, a sort of nice welcoming environment. Um, I like lovely paintings and pictures. Um, also, whatever inspires or encourages you maybe reading autobiography of people who have been successful or heroes and heroines, things that you see and things that you read, you consume, they all go on to your um, well-being. Also, what you listen to. I don't listen to the news that much anymore because I find that it's got a lot of negativity that tends to affect uh, my emotional well-being. I'd rather focus on... Uh, something that inspires me or makes me laugh or something that encourages somebody else that listening than listen to a news where somebody has been stabbed or some negativity. I, I tend to avoid that. So that's very important as well. And generally for everybody, it's very important that we find our happy place, no matter what life throws at us. Um, we need to find that thing that will bring a smile to our face. Uh, Dr. Johnson had emphasized so much about laughing. I agree with her, that's very important. Even if you have nothing to laugh about, stand in the mirror and just grin. It's, it's, it's like magic to your well-being. And um, I hope that I've been able in some my own little way uh, to share some of the uh, uh, experiences and things that you can do to help yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, Sister Titi. Is that Yes, all? thank you. Yes, if we can take questions now. I think Dr. Johnson and I were still here. So we yeah. can take questions and maybe... Um, is anybody or comments or suggestions or anybody who has uh, needs clarity on whatever we've discussed? Thank you. 
Welcome. So ladies, please be feel free to ask questions or anywhere you need more clarifications. May I ask a question to my sister, my sister from my childhood friend? If I'm feeling very low, I've tried all this. I keep in journals, praying, laughing, and I'm still not coping. And I'm too embarrassed to go to see somebody, I a professional. Because that stigma is there. Is there anything else I could do to for myself? Any other self-help things you could do? You are muted. Sorry about that. Like I said, the affirmations help. Um, for me, I, I, I think you just need to figure out what kind of person you are. Um, sometimes I can be very private as well, but I find that um, saying the affirmations to myself um, sort of helps me. Um, everybody wants to hear that they're beautiful. Everybody wants to hear that uh, they're strong, even though you're not. What you're telling, you're training your subconscious and all these things work together, your mind, your sight, your, 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 your hearing. You know, you say it to yourself, it, it does help. And there will be somebody somewhere that you feel comfortable with. Um, like I said, you need to find your tribe. Find, uh, if it's not your mentor, if it's not your pastor, there will be somebody, maybe your mother or some elderly person that you respect. But it's very important that whoever it is, is a positive person somebody who can actually deal with it for you positively, not add to the weight that you already have. You don't want to go to who's going to blame you. You don't want to go to who's going to make you feel like, oh, that's the end. No, you want hope. Um, you want somebody who's going to encourage you. And usually our doctors are people who we try and relate to because you, you don't really don't, they don't know your background that much but at least you can say that this is how I'm feeling and they can usually recommend or take steps to help you. But I personally think that it's very important on the home front to get somebody that we can always call and talk to. They don't have to be your relatives. Um, for instance, Oprah had Maya Angelou. She was never related to, they were never related to each other but they met and she just sort of connected. There will be somebody that you can connect to and uh, somebody that you can open your heart out to. You can still filter what it is, but address what is gnawing at you, what is biting at you, what is most difficult to deal with. That's how I would deal with it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I have a, just a question for you, Dr. Johnson, too. I usually, I think it's the menopause. I have problems with sleeping, too. What can I do to help myself? I try not to take sleeping pill. Thank you. I hate sleeping pills. Menopause is a cause of sleeping, poor sleep is free. for many reasons. You are more anxious, the night sweats, the flushes are real. It takes a while to get back to your sleeping pattern. And most guys, we get older as well. We get more stressed, we worry more of so many things. Is it our adult children? Is it about our finances or, um, or work? So those things impact on your sleeping pattern. Take baby steps. I said, keep have a good routine. From routine, no tablets, no phones, one hour before. Keep yourself hydrated, but in moderation, don't keep going up to the loo. Tamalti works wonders, Tamalti works wonders. 
one bag or two, my, I can't do one bag, it doesn't work for me. Two tea bags, leave there for a while and drink it. Simples, I know, no, it's a quick fix. With time, you get better. Have, wear cotton or cotton night clothes. If you can't, if you see, see sweat, to me, don't wear anything at all. I don't, I must say I don't anymore, I'm as honest, if you menopause, I sweat too much. Have a cool shower, cotton sheets so skin can breathe. It will help you with time. It gets better and better. Have a fan beside you as well. And it gets better. It takes a while. It won't happen overnight. I won't be, I'm honest with you. But with time, sleeping more, one hour more, one hour more. I must wake up refreshed. You wake up refreshed. You need 10 hours. You need to sleep. You need more sleep. So try your best. It gets better. Just keep at it. Uh, thank you, Dr. Johnson. Uh, thank and you, I have a question for Sister Titi. Uh, what about uh, women that are undergoing abuse mm -hmm. in marriage? And because of our culture or because of what people will say, they keep to themselves. And before you know it, when we just say that maybe they drop dead or something like that, how can we help people in this kind of situation? Thank you very much for that. Um, I'm glad that there's a lot of aware awareness about that now. It's very important that you are in an environment where you are loved and you're nurtured. Hostile environments create problems and those problems eventually lead to more complications. Um, I know for sure that where you're constantly stressed, which happens in an abusive environment, whether it's physical or emotional, you start to develop, your, your body is inflamed. I think Dr. Johnson can explain this better. And inflammation of the body is the onset of any form of disease. So it's a question of, do you value your life? How well do you value your life? What steps can you take to address the situation? If you can't, the best thing for you to do is to take yourself out of that environment. It is someone that is alive that can look after their children. It is when you are alive that you can look after your health. Whether you like it or not, emotional abuse leads, if it's not addressed, to further complications. So I would not advise anybody to stay in that kind of environment, no matter what the culture says, because the culture will bury you if you die, but the culture will not look after your children if you leave children behind. And um, it, it's very deep, but the most important thing is to get help. Don't just die in silence and don't think that it will get better. Um, unfortunately, most abused homes, once it starts, it doesn't stop no amount of prayer, very rarely, maybe some don't, but very rarely, you just need professional help. Um, I think doc, Dr. Johnson can shed some more light on the inflammation and the health issues and things that come with uh, a stress-related life. Thank you. I, I, I completely agree with what you said about, when you say about domestic abuse, you think about physical abuse. So that's, the, so that's the least form of abuse in my opinion. Emotional abuse is much worse. What's emotional abuse? Someone talking down at you all the time, someone abusing you, making you feel, making you feel worthless or inferior. That's actually worse, in my opinion, than physical abuse. Also financial abuse as well. When someone's not giving you or doing what, depriving you of money, trying to, to oppress you, it helps you, affects your psyche. I hope that people are that that with time, when really it gets inflamed, it's a major cause of can all the cancers, of bowel cancer, breast cancer, all cancers could cause because of the inflammation to the body. And also especially diabetes, high blood pressure and stroke is real. So facial abuse, emotional abuse, and to me, much lower down is physical abuse. Seek help. And my sister Titi said, it's the only person who's alive can be able to have a chance at the marriage again. Seek help. You could be apart for a while and things get resolved. I don't like, God, I don't like divorce. God doesn't love divorce, but you need to be alive and through your purpose on life. Seek help. 
Don't stay there. Someone said, and nothing to be ashamed about. It's not your fault you've, you've been abused. The person who has a problem, it's the person who is abusing you, be it physical, emotional, or, or financial. It's not your fault. Nothing you've done wrong. That person has a problem. So you seek help as early as possible. Don't be left at risk. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, you, you, you just mentioned uh, the second question I want to ask because uh, we are in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And they used to say that um, divorce is not good. I know God doesn't want divorce, but some cases, because I've seen instances of pastors telling ladies, even though they are really going through it, and tell them, just stay with it. God said you should not divorce. And some people have gone down six feet below because of the, all this kind of advice. I'm not saying it's not good, but there are some situations that I really want to address that we as women, if it's getting too much, are we supposed to die there and say, because our denomination doesn't allow it? No. The Lord Almighty who created us wants us to live as well. <laughs> and he wants us to live in good health. So like I said, we set boundaries to what is going to destroy us. Um, you're shooting yourself in the foot if you continually stay in, a, in an environment where uh, your health and well-being is threatened. So you need to find ways and means to preserve yourself your life and preserve the peace and harmony around you. The angels dwell only where there's peace and harmony. Uh, prayers are answered where there's peace and harmony. It's very important that you strive for that. Each person's situation is different. It's all right for somebody to say you stay in an environment where they probably don't know the extent of the abuse. I'm sure if somebody comes to you and says that, oh, they're threatened with stabbing or they're hitting them with uh, harmful objects every day, you'll be alarmed and you won't encourage the person to stay there. So I think we should all assess our circumstances and use our intuition, be guided accordingly. You are the only one that knows how this is affecting you. And you are the only one that can take steps to address this situation. So I'll just appeal to each and every person to, to assess the situations themselves and take steps that will help them in whatever way that they can. Thank you. And can I just add a couple of sentences to what she said? Thank you very much. I completely agree with my sister. I, I always think my come and say that no one must love me more that I love myself. I love that I love myself is God the Father. You got to love yourself first. Love yourself first. You won't take anything from anybody. You won't take, you won't take abuse. You won't take people to be cheat to you or to be unkind to you. Because you, you love yourself that much, you will demand respect. You 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 let people know how to treat you, by how you carry yourself, how you talk to yourself. If you are kind to yourself, you won't take anybody to, anybody to else and less from anybody. We have people. people has one killing their wives. It was starting one day. And I've been abused many years and they've been staying, stay, stay there and manage. Let's open our eyes. Let's shine our eyes well. Look after yourself. Look after yourself. Guide yourself as well and use wisdom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to add this to what that we have been saying. Um, as women, I think we need to love ourselves. We need to compliment ourselves. Even among women, we talk ourselves down. Uh, this one looks like this, that one looks like that, as if we can create anything. 
You know, as women, we should not hate. We should not envy ourselves. We should just compliment. My sister, you are looking good. My sister, you look beautiful. Uh, as the doctor has said, and as Sister Titi has said, it goes a long way to make a day or to mar a day. If you just look at a sister and you look down on her, it's not good. We, children of God, we should try to appreciate each other. Let's show love. Let's be there for ourselves. You know, you don't know what anybody is going through. Because they are looking good and you are envying them, you are adding more to their problems. They just decided to do that. So we should be praying for ourselves. We should be encouraging ourselves. We should stop it. If you, our sister is up there, let's compliment her. If our sister is starting maybe a business or a practice or something, let's come around and encourage. All of us, we need encouragement. As she said, no woman is a superwoman. So when we see our sister looking good, let's just compliment, you know? Because some of us, we look proud that we cannot compliment anybody, you know? A little compliment goes a long way to help somebody. And looking down on somebody goes a long way to destroy the more, whatever the person is going through. And let's try to share ourselves up. Let's say somebody's child is doing well, let's tap into that goodness. And before you know it, we'll all be there celebrating the goodness of the Lord. Uh, God Almighty, we help us in Jesus' name. And if anybody wants to add anything, concerning that point, you are free to do so. God bless us. Anyone with any addition or question? Any addition from any of our ladies? Hello, I'll speak a little bit on abuse. My name is Kemi. I agree with everything that has been said, but unless this, this forum has not, is not for that. I think if someone is going through abuse, we all agree that they shouldn't stay there. But well, I think they need specialist help. So I think they need to know who to ask for. A lot of women who actually get killed, get killed after they leave their husband or their partner that's abusing them. So you need specialist help. You need to know what to put in place, both for you and for your children. And if your pastor is saying, um, don't leave, that's based on their own knowledge, which we know is not correct. It's not sound advice, but they need to get the right help to leave. And in places like America and UK, there the law gives you protection as well and advice on how to leave. So he, anybody in that situation needs specialist help. That's my contribution. Praise the Lord. I just have um, a question to ask um, Dr. Johnson. I know you talked about diet, just for clarification. We, I've, I've seen in some books, they say um, red wine is good for the heart. I just want to clarify that if it's true or if it's a myth. Yes, it is. Known for the red wine is good for the heart in moderation. I don't drink for my own reasons, my spiritual growth. Yeah. Red wine is good for the heart, it's good for the heart, it's a known fact, it is. Not white wine, red, white, red wine in moderation. It is good for the heart, it's been proven. Thank you so much.
Any other question or contribution? Hello? Hi. I have a question. Um, how do we filter out negativity from our daily news um, so as to help our mental health? Thank you. Give it to you. <laughs> yes, I talked about, I personally, I avoid the news because you find that the lot of this is either on the radio or on the television. If they're not talking about a stabbing, they're talking about uh, some fight or bombing somewhere. So I tend to just stay away. Um, if I need to uh, uh, find out what's going on around me, I probably maybe just check Google or something. But like I said, the three main senses are very important. What you see, uh, what you hear, and uh, uh, what you see, what you hear, two main ones around you. So avoid it, just set boundaries. Um, if watching TV, to, to set your channel to uh, one that uh, shows what you like and um, stay away from, I don't, I don't watch horror movies because it affects me, affects my sleep. Um, I, don't watch, I don't watch things that upset me. If I see a headline, even on WhatsApp, when they set, send some of these distressing videos or headlines, I just delete it. I don't look at it because I know it's, it's, going, to have, it's going to unsettle me. And um, when I'm unsettled, I'm not calm. It affects my whole day, my work, everything. So I tend to stay away. I just delete it. WhatsApp messages, emails, uh, phone calls. Some people, you know, they're very negative. Once you see their number, I don't pick it up. You know, um, because I know that all oh, that person, I don't want them to, I don't want them to bring their negative energy into my space, because whether you like it or not, uh, people like that are like garbage trucks. They dump their rubbish into you, and you stink all day. So uh, you, you need to conserve and save your energy. You want positivity, so do things and expose yourself to things that are positive only. Because if you go and expose yourself to negative things, then it will poison your environment and that would affect every area of your life. I hope that helps. Um, I find that also listening to music that I like, even if I feel down, if I listen to music that I like and I dance, I get uplifted. Um, it could be gospel. It all depends on my mood. It could be classical music, but anything that uplifts me, I'm all for. I hope that helps. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question or contribution? Any other contributions? Let's come up now. Let's open up and ask questions, please, before we end this program. In the absence of in the absence of no questions, I uh, will call on Sister Comfort Agidibi. So she's the uh, HOD of the RCCD Women, Good Women of a Modern Life Chapel to give a vote of thanks at the closing prayer. Sister Comfort. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to Dr. Johnson and Sister Titi. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy, busy schedule. We know that it's not easy, especially being um, working in this part of the world. But we just want to appreciate you. I want to say that this teaching has been very, very, very impactful. I, for one, there were some things that both of you mentioned today that I've never heard before. Like Dr. Titi, you mentioned that um, the bigger your waist, the more fat. Um, Dr. Johnson, sorry. You said the bigger your waist, more, the more fat you have around your heart. That's just, you know, rang a bell. I was like, wow, I've never heard that before. So I just want to say that it's been a very, very impactful teaching. Thank you also to Sister Titi for letting us know that you cannot give what you don't have. You must love yourself. It's out of the love that you have within you that you can also share with other people. So I pray that the virtue that has left you, the Lord God Almighty will replenish in a hundredfold. And everything that you have taught us by the grace of God will be able to put them all into practice and will turn out to be empowered women indeed in Jesus' name. Um, can we just say a short prayer before we end this no, conference? No, no, no. And I also want to thank everybody for coming on to this conference. And I pray that the Lord God Almighty will continue to bless each and every one of us in Jesus' name. And so, dear Lord, we just want to thank you for the success of this conference. Indeed, Lord, you have done what only you can do. Thank you for your servants. Thank you for your children that you have used to bless us this afternoon. Lord, we pray that you replenish them even in a hundredfold. We pray that their lives will continually be an example even unto other women. We pray that everything, oh God, that they have taught us today will not work against them in the name of Jesus. We pray that for every one of us on this platform, paraventure we are going through one thing or the other. Father, we ask, oh God, that you will come through for us in the name of Jesus. That Father, you will help us, oh God, to practicalize everything that we have heard everything that we have been taught that will make our lives even better in the name of Jesus. Father, we appreciate you for all that you have done. And we say, may your name alone, alone be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. As we live here this afternoon, we are not living in your presence. May we go from your presence into your presence in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father and our Redeemer, because we know you've answered us, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace of God. Let's share. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.